is Mike Weeman, and what I'd like to go through here is some housekeeping items that are associated with your MA3000 business statistics class. Uh, when you first come into the class portal here, you'll notice this is uh, the first thing that you'll be uh, looking at, regardless if you're in section one or section two, should look uh, very similar to what I've got currently on the screen right now. What I'd like to go over here first is some housekeeping items that are associated with getting you started inside the class, how to get into my stat lab, which is where we will be doing our corresponding homework as well as the computational quizzes for the class, and should address any of the frequent asked questions that we will see uh, to get you started inside of the course. So. Anytime you first come in and you don't see the news items, you can simply click on the news here and that will open up all of the respective news items that you will see inside the class. News are where you're going to see instructor announcements and I will generally be updating these at least two to three times a week. So this is where you will see the corresponding updates as far as things that are due uh, any updates of things that are going on inside of the class. So this is an important section that you always want to take a look at. First things first, just a welcome here where it says welcome to MA3000 Business Statistics. There's some ugly mug shot. I don't know. It probably took about three or four cameras to get that uh, picture, but that's me. Uh, welcome you to the class, uh, that type of thing. And you're watching the video that I'm currently uh, showing right now. Now the next item that I want to bring to your attention is these video links. And the video links, again, you can find by getting into the news section. These guys that I've got listed here, LP1 Homework uh, 1 through 9, these links here, are going to be very helpful in terms of completing your homework assignments. I have went through step by step on each one of these guys on how to complete every single homework problem that's out there. Now you'll notice that we are also going to use Microsoft Excel inside of this class. And with this being a math class and a statistics course, that the calculations sometimes become a little bit cumbersome if you're doing them by hand. And in the industry, we utilize technology to help speed up the process of the respective calculations. You're going to see that in these demonstrations that I have an Excel template that is associated with each and every homework assignment. I strongly encourage you to watch each of these when it comes time to do your first homework assignment. You'll end up clicking on that link that I'm pointing to right there, and it literally will go through step by step on how to complete every single problem that's out there from the homework perspective. Quiz problems are going to mirror the exact same types of questions that you're going to see inside the homework. And again, these links will be very helpful as well. Uh, the housekeeping items, that's the one you're watching right now. If it's the first time you've ever used My Stat Lab, MSL is just the abbreviation for My Stat Lab. Um, it will go through how to complete an answer inside of My Stat Lab inside this link, as well as uh, how to utilize, make sure that you're keying in your answers correctly. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at that video as well. Towards the end of the term, this one's going to be helpful as well in terms of review for the final examination. I also have a video that's out there as well. Students in the past, I've taught this for many uh, quarters and have loved these particular videos. They've been very helpful in terms of getting through the respective homework assignments that are out there. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at these. If you do have questions on it, I'm more than willing to answer them. However, this is a good start to take a look at how those particular problems are completed inside the homework and then we'll mirror the computational quizzes that you're going to be doing as well. Next item we're going to take a look at is how do you get into my stat lab? You're going to notice here at the very bottom there is a link here that is to a PDF file. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this one uh, for us. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this particular guy here. And we'll close this out. You'll notice this will be the instructions that will get you into 
my stat lab for this particular course. Regardless if you're in section one or section two, the course ID that you're going to need to get into my stat lab is this NAU 27842. So again, if you're in section one or section two, everybody's going to enroll into this NAU 27842. So you'll follow the corresponding instructions to get in here. If you've utilized my math lab before, if you've been inside, say, in an MA1000 or an MA2000, the quantitative reasoning course, you use the same user ID and password that you used previously. And again, you can utilize that same ID password to get in. So these will be the instructions that'll uh, to get into my stat lab, and you'll just follow these instructions to get in there to register inside the course. But a lot of times, students will come in and ask me, Mike, what's the course ID that I need? It's this NAU 27842 for the spring quarter. So that's what you'll need uh, to get in. So a couple things I do want to make mention. My stat lab is a required component for this particular class. In other words, you're going to be unsuccessful if you do not purchase the My Stat Lab course code. Now, some of you may have a previous hard copy of the textbook, and that's fine. However, for this particular class, it is required that you purchase the My Stat Lab access. If you don't, you're not going to get credit for the homework, nor are you going to get credit for the computational quizzes. So, this is imperative from day one that you get into my stat lab as well have, have full access to my stat lab throughout the entire spring quarter. So some of you may have taken MA3000 before and that's fine. However, once you purchase it for a textbook, you don't have to purchase it again. Now that doesn't imply if you had MA2000 or MA1000 or another course that used my lab uh, type of interface, you will need to purchase one for this particular course. And most of you are going to fall into these three scenarios. Scenario one is if you've, this is the first time that you've taken MA3000 or this business stat course, the only thing that is required for this class to purchase is the my stat lab code. You're going to see in the other videos where I demonstrate my stat lab that you have an ebook that is exactly the same as the hard copy of this particular textbook. So it's approximately $105, give or few, take a few dollars each way, but you can directly purchase that through the um, Pearson website. If you have a credit card or a debit card, you can directly purchase it. And you're done. You do not have to purchase the full $300 packet that the NAU bookstore. If you are going through financial aid, ask your advisor. You will see on the website that you can just purchase the standalone MSL access. If you have to go through financial aid or through the bookstore, you can go that way as well. I don't require the hard copy of the textbook. You don't have to spend the $300 for the packet or whatever the bookstore is charging for it. The only thing that's required is the My Stat Lab. That is imperative that you have from day one inside the course. So scenario one, it's the first time that you've taken it, spend the 105 bucks, or it'll be a little bit more if you go through the bookstore, if you're getting it financial aid or veterans benefits or whatever. But that would be scenario one if this is the first time that you've taken the course. Scenario two, You've taken business stats, but it was the sixth edition. Maybe it's been a year or two ago since you've taken the course. We are currently in the seventh edition. What that means is the My Stat Lab code that you purchase is specific to the textbook that we're using. So if you took this course two years ago, you will need to repurchase it. If you took it, say, winter 2016-17 or the fall of 2016 uh, or here recently, odds are you'll be able to reuse it and you don't have to repurchase uh, the, the code. But if it's been, say, two years ago since you've taken the course, you will need to purchase uh, that respective course code. The minimum that you have to spend is that 105 bucks for uh, the respective code. If there's specific questions on that,
please let me know. Now, I know some of you, due to uh, maybe a wait on financial aid or the, the means to purchase it, may come up from day one inside of the class. You can get temporary access, and it will show you inside there. There will be a link that you can get temporary access for the first two weeks of the course. However, once those 14 days or those two weeks are up, you cannot get temporary access again, nor will I allow you to re-sign up with a second ID. You only get one two-week temporary access. So if you create account one and think, okay, I'm going to get temporary access again with the second account, it doesn't work that way. You only get one temporary access because then I have to do things in my end to pull either from one locate one account or a second account. And again, you only are allowed one temporary access. If you create a second one, I will disable that account and you will not be able to utilize it. So again, you need to purchase this. This is a required. So please work out, however, from a financial standpoint, to ensure that you have this My Stat Lab access. Because again, approximately three quarters of the grade is based upon your completion of the work inside here. And again, if you don't have it, you're not going to be successful in the class, nor will you pass the class. So again, if there's questions on that, send me a private message. By the way, that's your email, your private message up here that I'm pointing to. You will also see me send you private messages as well. And again, that's the way inside the D2L class portal that you can send me a private message is inside there. But again, if there's questions on that, don't hesitate to send me a message and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. So again, that is required for this particular course. Let's go to the next item, which I want to talk about late assignment policy. You will notice for every milestone assignment that's listed inside of the class, there's three columns that are listed off here to the right. The first column is when that milestone or assignment is going to open inside of either D2L, if it's a discussion forum, or inside of My Stat Lab. Things inside of My Stat Lab will not open, nor will the discussion forums open, before the start of the scheduled time inside the syllabus inside the course. So you will notice for Unit 1 or for LP1, your introduction, your computational quiz, and your homework, all three of those guys are going to open the first day of class on March the 9th, which is a Thursday at 12 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Please pay attention, depending on where you're located in the U.S. or the world, that everything is based upon either Mountain Standard Time or after March the 12th, everything goes to Daylight Savings Time. So please ensure that you're following your adjustment accordingly. So if you live on the East Coast, you have to adjust plus two hours. If you're in Central Time Zone, you have to adjust plus one hour. If you're in the Pacific uh, Time Zone, you have to subtract an hour off of it. So again, that falls under your responsibility to make sure that you know the adjustments based upon everything being set, either Mountain Daylight Time or Mountain Standard Time, and that's based upon headquarters being in Rapid City, South Dakota. That's why I, everything from an online perspective is based upon Mountain Standard Time. Second column I want to reference is the due date per the syllabus. You'll notice Unit 1 is kind of short. In other words, everything's going to open that Thursday, but it, uh, the due date is actually the 12th on these three items, on the introduction, homework one, and computational quiz. Now, folks, I get the life happens stuff. I know there's going to be issues that come up that's associated with family, significant others, the job, whatever the case may be, what we have built in to the schedule of everything is NAU's late assignment policy. What that means is you are allowed up to 14 days late to submit any assignment or discussion forum with the exception of the very last week. And I'll talk about this here briefly. But you'll notice that, say, this first introduction discussion, 
The due date is the 12th before 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. However, I will take submissions on that uh, discussion forum up through the 26th, which is 14 days late. And that is per NAU's late assignment policy. Now, after the 26th, you do not, you are not allowed to submit for credit after those 14 days. That also applies to your My Stat Lab items, your LP1 homework, LP1 computational quiz. Notice the due dates are the 12th on each of those. You get 14 days without penalty on those guys uh, that are listed there. You'll notice I have every single assignment listed here for the class when it opens in either D2O or my stat lab, when the due date is listed per the syllabus, and how many days late, which is 14 days for most everything, with the exception of these last guys that I'm highlighting here. You're going to notice for the discussion form for discussion 9.1, as well as LP9 items, our last day of class is the 24th. However, for any discussion forum and or uh, my stat lab homework or computational quiz, I close those guys off one day before the end of class. Last day is the 24th. You'll notice you will see that the closure date is the 23rd. So you do not get the full 14 days on that because the 24th, which is our last day of class, I will go out and update any remaining scores into the D2L gradebook that those will be ready to go. The only thing that can be completed on the last day of class is the final examination. And again, you will get a series of email reminders as well as private messages and news items that will remind you of those particular things. So. Again, you get two weeks on everything else. LP9 is a little bit different. You get a little bit less time than the 14 days on it. So do keep that in mind towards the end of the term that or the quarter that uh, you don't get the full 14 days on the LP9 side. Because everything with the, uh, the final exam is the only item that can be completed the physical last day of class, which is May 24th for us. Uh, for the spring quarter. Okay. Next item I want to cover is uh, quiz scoring and availability. As I made mention earlier, everything opens based upon that first column that we just talked about, which is 12 a.m. either Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Day Daylight Time and closes two weeks afterwards. LP homeworks, there's going to be nine of them throughout the course, are worth up to 40 points. Now, for those guys on the homeworks, those are what are called practice until mastery. You can do the homework problems as long as that assignment is still open as many times as needed to get full credit. So if it takes you that problem once, twice, a hundred times, it, you can do it as many times as needed to maximize the score. So. Do keep that in mind. Homework is an unlimited amount of attempts on those given assignments. The computational quizzes, those guys are timed. They are based upon a three-hour time limit. Once you open a computational quiz inside of my stat lab, it will close three hours afterwards. In other words, you can't open the quiz, print off all the problems, and then come back into it, the clock is running. So let's say, for example, I open that quiz at 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. You get until 11 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to complete that quiz. You get up to three attempts to take that particular computational quiz, and I will record to the D2L gradebook the best score of those three attempts. So if the first one's the best score and you're happy with it, you don't have to take it again. But if you take it a second or third time, however many times you take that computational quiz, I will record that score to the D2L gradebook uh, based upon the best score of the three attempts. 
Now, something I stress to students, and I want to kind of allude to this uh, last line here relative to the time frame. Everything inside of my stat lab, based upon this last column that we were looking at inside the schedule, closes at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. So let's say, for example, let's scroll back up here. You go in for the first computational quiz, and you decide to wait until March the 26th, and you open that guy up at 11 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. I'm talking about this guy that I'm highlighting right here. What that means is, is if I come back and read this guy here on this last line, that means that you only get one hour to complete that quiz. You don't buy yourself additional time if, oh, I'm going to open it at 11 o'clock on March the 26th. So that means I get until 2 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. It doesn't work that way. Please be proactive and ensure that you allow yourself that full three hours if you are going to take an attempt inside the quiz because the system inside of my stat lab will automatically shut it down at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time based upon what's in this third column that is listed inside here. So do keep that in mind. Okay? As I made mention before, once this date is passed, the late assignment date, I do not accept it for credit. And again, we built in that life happens time as far as significant other, family, work, whatever the case may be. After the 14 days are up, I do not accept it for any additional credit. And I'll save you the trouble of sending me private messages or whatever. I'm going to allude to coming back to this announcement stating that once the 14 days are up, uh, it's done. I do not take any late penalty off. In other words, some other classes take 10% or 50% based upon how late it is. I don't take any deductions, but once the 14 days are up, you're done. You do not get any additional time. If you need to discuss that any further with me, send me a private message. I'll clarify that expectation. Now, the other thing I want to make mention here on this next news item is my stat lab and the D2L gradebook does not talk to each other. What that means is the instructor has to go in and manually update the D2L gradebook. So let's say on Friday... March the 10th, you go out and you complete LP1's homework assignment, okay? That's great. I'm glad that you started the assignment, that everything's hunky-dory with it. However, you're not going to see the update to the D2L gradebook until Monday, March the 13th. What I want to bring to your attention is this is, uh, you don't need to submit me anything. I don't want screenshots. You don't have to send me a private message say, Mike, hey, I got my LP1 homework. Where's the score going to be? I only update the D2L gradebook from my stat lab once a week, and that occurs on Monday morning. So in other words, any work that was done the previous week is going to be updated Monday morning when I do my updates to the gradebook, and I only do that once a week. So again, sending me an email or a private message saying, hey, I you know, completed the assignment. Why don't I see it in the gradebook? I'm going to loop back to this message saying, hey, it, I only update the gradebook once a week. And that is going to occur on Monday mornings. Don't, don't be worried the fact that the score is not there. It's just I have to do manual intervention to get it there. And it's not the responsibility of the instructor to do it on a daily basis. So... You'll only see that as once a week, and that will occur on Monday mornings, okay? Next guy I want to make mention is discussion forum expectations. Now, when you create your postings for discussion forums, I'm expecting quality out there. In other words, you can't just go out and do a response that is a good job, or just repeat what somebody else is say, or let's ask a question because I don't know the answer to it. Put some thought into it. Put some quality into that respective posting. And I've got the listing of the items that are here. 
you can't double dip as well. What that means is you go and respond to yourself or you split up the initial post into multiple parts, thinking that you're going to get your initial post in two responses by splitting them into chunks. It doesn't work that way. You have to have an initial post and two quality responses to get to full credit. And you'll see that in the next announcement that we're going to talk about. Things that I'm looking for, this is a math class. And in this math class, I want to see examples of what you're doing. Don't go in and like I've got an item five here where I say issues with math. You know, we all have our, our issues when it comes to, you know, taking math courses before. And I get the fact that I had the bad, bad math teacher 10 years ago or I haven't taken math in 20 years. That's fine. Let's leave that at the door. Let's work through the issues, but I got to be able to know what you have the issue on specifically. In other words, I can't solve world peace, can't solve world hunger. If you tell me you have a problem with, oh, I don't get LP1, the way I'm going to respond to you is, okay, tell me what issue you have with LP1. You got to be specific so that I can help you with the specific issues that are out there. So again, I'm looking for examples. If we're doing a calculation on a central tendency, which is going to be one thing we're going to talk about once we get into the scope of uh, LP1 as well as LP2. If you show that example of the calculation, that's more important than just saying, okay, how do you calculate a mean? Well, you just take the sum of the numbers divided by the number of occurrences. That doesn't demonstrate to me that you know how to do that calculation. The example of working it and showing the mathematics behind it is more important to me than doing the summary because let's face it, you're gonna go and look up on a third party website, copy and paste what's out there and then put it back into the discussion poem uh, post. In that instance, that doesn't determine or tell me that you know how to do the calculation. So. Examples are the best way to ensure that you get credit on that discussion posting. And again, if you just summarize, I'm going to redirect you to do a specific example when I see that out there. So again, don't don't start in there with doing uh, the infamous uh, posting for attendance. Posting for attendance does not count for attendance, nor will you get a score inside of a discussion forum. I'm expecting quality, this is a junior level math course, and I'm expecting that quality that's out there. If you post for attendance, I'm going to delete it out there and it's not going to count either way. So do pay attention to that throughout the scope of the quarter. Next thing, how are they scored? How are your discussion participation requirements? First thing is, there are two discussion forms, the very first one the introduction one that you're going to do the first unit or LP and the next one is the very last one which is the final reflection. Three points for the initial, one point for the first response, one point for the second response. That gets you up to five points on those discussion forms. For, and I'm going to come back to item two here in a minute. All other discussion forms still follows the same convention. Initial post, two quality responses. The major difference is you get six for the initial, two for the first response, and two for the uh, second response. So if I add six, two, and two, that gets me to 10 points on that discussion form. Now, you will notice for each LP that's out there, there is something that is called a muddiest point discussion. The muddiest point discussion is an opportunity to express concerns on things that you're having issues with inside the course. These are Q&A, in my opinion, and do not count towards a grade, nor do they count towards attendance. The only way you gain attendance inside the class is by completing either something inside of my stat lab, either a homework assignment or a computational quiz, or a graded forum. Muddiest point discussions do not count for uh, participation. In other words, you don't get a grade for it, nor do you get attendance for it. It has to be something 
as a graded activity for it to count. Okay, so do keep that in mind. As I may mention before, discussion forums do not open early because they are tied to attendance. Uh, so again, as long as you have a quality post out there during the time that that discussion forum is open, that will count towards attendance as well as uh, it potentially earns you the grade as long as it matches the criteria. Again, we made mention up to 14 days late. We've already talked through that. The other thing I want to make mention as well is this item 6 that's listed there. The instructor will only be active in the forum in the current week. You're allowed two weeks to submit the discussion forum late. However, I am only active in that discussion forum in the time that it's currently due. So LP1, for example, the introductions, I will be active responding from the 9th through the 12th inside that discussion forum. Once the 13th rolls around, and again, as we talked about earlier, that's in late assignment time frame, I am not required to respond to a late posting. So again, it's nothing personal. However, we I'm current in each week as far as the discussion forum. So once it's late, I am not required to, dis, uh, to reply out there, and you will see that I will not respond to late discussion posts. You still will earn credit for them. However, if we're in week three or LP3 and you're still replying to LP1, I'm currently in LP3. So again, you will not see responses that are out there. Last, uh, another thing, Buddy's point, we kind of uh, alluded to this earlier. Just to reiterate, muddiest points do not earn a grade, nor do they count for attendance. So again, muddiest point is basically a Q&A form. Again, I'll be active during the time that they are open. However, uh, you do not get attendance for them, nor do they count as a grade. If there's questions on that, let me know. A couple other items. As we made mention, everything is Mountain Standard Time. Uh, which will only be for a few days in our course, the 9th through the 11th. Once the 12th of March rolls around, we'll be in Mountain Daylight Time. Make sure that you're aware of that. Don't send a private message saying, hey, I thought I had additional time, knowing that I lived on the East Coast, or I was shorted time because I lived on the West Coast. Again, make sure you're aware of the time differential. I've also got a URL if you want to see what the difference in time relative to Rapid City is, you can click on that link and it will open up what that time differential, depending on where you are in the United States and or across the world. Last thing, I may mention at the beginning that we are going to be utilizing Microsoft Excel. As long as you have Excel 2007 or another or a newer version of that particular uh, Microsoft Excel on your PC, you're good to go for this particular class. However, if you don't have it on your PC, NAU uh, provides Microsoft Office for free as long as you are enrolled in a particular class. The product is called Office 365. You download it onto your PC or whatever device that you're using, your laptop, etc. And you can get that for free as long as you're enrolled as a student. I don't personally support this, but if you do a click here, uh, it will go through the process of how to get Microsoft Excel installed onto your PC. So there's no reason to come back and say, Mike, I can't afford to get Microsoft Excel. Well, you get it for free. So again, make sure that you resolve any of that issue uh, before the start of class or the first few days of class to make sure you do have a PC that has Microsoft Excel installed on it. Please let me know if there's any questions. Uh, I want to make this a successful experience, but again, wanted to go through the expectations of what you as a student are responsible for throughout the scope of this spring quarter. Thank you very much. Have a good day.